So there's a graphite spire across the tail here. And then there's one on the leading edge of the elevator. This has got strap hinges in it too. One, two, three, four of them. I found that to do quite adequately on my other planes like this. Same thing here. There's one, two, three, four strap hinges. They run basically from the carbon strip to the carbon strip. Um, these have uh, these have a piece of carbon rod in them, just like the uh, just like this, just like the these. Uh, Actually, this is only a piece of 60,000, it's not very thick. But it's enough to stiffen these up with the epoxy you put in to, to hold it in there. It gives you a very stiff control surface that isn't going to flutter down here when you're controlling it from up here. So, I'm sure there's people out there that will tell you you don't need that, especially on the, uh, the original. But I'm convinced I do need it. Now there's some advantages to this plane over the other ones. One thing is, this area is really large. Here's the stock plane. <coughs> and you can see that the area on either side of the uh, nacelle, the uh, pylon here from the motor nacelle, is very narrow and if you come to an abrupt halt <laughs> like hitting the water at high speed this whole section just breaks out um, I've done it a couple of times and if you fix that so it doesn't break off then the nacelle just breaks off snap so <coughs> I'm going to um, put this in our, with our TV. I'm going to put this one in with our TV. And this is the elevator servo. It will go in with our TV. And um, we'll hook up the rods. Maybe we'll do a little on hooking up the rods next time. I'm going to glue the speed control into the cabin roof before I apply it. <clears throat> I'm going to attach the rudder to the plane and I'm going to use um, these fiberglass hinges. <clears throat> you make a slot. In fact, I'm going to use these fiberglass hinges. They're really inexpensive. What you do is you cut a slot in the foam. I use my uh, utility knife because it's got a thick, heavy blade. And what I do is I'll push it into the foam like this. And then I'll take the back of the blade and kind of gouge out the hole to make sure it's wide enough for the hinge. And I'm marking the back of the tail assembly for the hinges. So I put the rudder where I want it and I mark the top and the bottom of the hinge. And I'm going to put three hinges in here because I had two in the last one. And believe it or not, I pulled them out. I pulled, kept pulling the bottom one out. So hopefully by putting three in here, now you have to get it right in the center of the foam going to be a little bigger than the hinge. There's hopefully the top one. And there's the middle one. the bottom.
think what I'm going to do is put the hinges in the rudder itself and let them set up and then put them into the tail assembly. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the hinge almost all the way out. I'm going to use super glue. I'm going to put a generous amount of super glue on both sides. And I'm going to slide it in to where I want it. I want it perpendicular to this edge because that's where it's hinging. That's where it's got to be true. And I'm just going to let it set up. No zip kicker. When you use when you use the kicker, it changes the glue, and it becomes a crystalline structure. It, it gets really hard. If you put something on something and hit it with the kicker and watch it real close, you can see it changing. Okay, now what you don't want is you don't want the, the super glue in this little middle piece where it's got to bend. So that's why I'm doing this. I'm going to prop it up like this so the glue doesn't run down into the hinge. It could wick up into the hinge, but I doubt it. So we'll let that set for a few minutes, and then we'll put it in the tail. And we've got to get a, uh, a control horn on this thing. And we need one in the elevator too. So we'll be doing some more of those.